Hey there, welcome to the channel. This channel is all about professional coding practices. In this video, I'm going to show you how to unit test a MongoDB Node.js application with MongoDB memory server. In this video, I'm gonna, we're gonna first going to install the MongoDB server, then we're going to add uh, test utils for MongoDB memory server, and then we're going to add test and check test coverage. We have a module that needs some love, so let, let's run the tests. You see only one file is tested, uh, so none of our MongoDB code is tested. So we want to start with tests for our models. So let's start with uh, name target model.spec.ps. I like to start with a failing test, so let's uh, go ahead with that. And we're going to start with a simple test. It should return, should patch an empty list of name targets. Uh, and then we're going to expect uh, name targets to have length zero. Okay, so let's run these tests in watch mode. It's not gonna work because we need uh, an in-memory test server for MongoDB. So we have a library that can help us with this, MongoDB memory server. So let's go ahead and install that. And then we're gonna run our tests. It's gonna fail of course, but this is the meat of what we need. So let's start with a helper file because we're gonna reuse between tests. Let's call it MongoDB memory test access. Yes. And we're gonna export connect. Export also a disconnect method uh, to create a memory server, then get an URI, and then the disconnect method is gonna stop it not gonna be quite enough we need to connect our mongoose instance mongoose instance we need to connect mongoose so similar to how we're doing it here on server.ps so let's go ahead with that here and of course we need to import mongoose as well all right so then we also need to use these methods does it work? We also need to disconnect Mongoose. Kind of three properties undefined reading stop. Oh, sorry. We need this one as well. You can see if I don't have this one, then you get a warning of uh, like uh, some process that's leaking. So we want to clean everything up. All right. So let's also add a test here for creating. Uh, it should create a name bucket. I like to copy the arguments here because um, I want the test to be very clear and I want to avoid mutations. You can see it's not working because there are some fields that are added. So let's do uh, expect object containing. So we're gonna expect an object containing this field here and we're gonna expect an ID and that's gonna, gonna be anything and then um, create it uh, and then that's also gonna be anything so this one is failing now and that's because we're not clearing our data after each test so we're gonna need to do here um, before each clean data. So if we look at 
just Google this one. And yes, I think there's something here that can help us. So it's simply here, drop the database. All right, looking sleek. So then we want to fetch an uh, fetch this uh, name target. Except we're gonna use the ID from the existing one. That's just better than doing anything. Right. So let's check this out. Awesome. So what's left here? Get name targets, find name target. Okay. Should not find a name target when none exists. Name target will be no. And then let's add another one. Should find a name target. So I'm not reusing any of these, even though it's the same. Um, I think the tests are cleaner like this. You can see all the setup and all the assertions in one place. So if we look at the code again here, oh, there is like this case that we have not tested where uh, you are passing in a valid ID. So how can we see a valid ID? Um, still here, I expect existing name target of ID to be uh, ID. Alright. So let's add test to our other model so let's start with something simple if you get an empty patch an empty list of guesses zero so this for this one we need a valid name target id Create a name target because we're not going to hear about the details of it. And then we're gonna use the ID as the name target. And that's where the tests. Okay, we need the same preparation. So it is possible to move this to like somewhere central, but I like to keep this explicit. Like if we're gonna have this centrally somewhere in the infrastructure, then it's not gonna be clear like what tests are actually doing some prep work and whatnot. So let's keep it like this, especially while we just have two files being tested. So this is working, that's nice. Let's create a guess as well. ID is expect of anything. We want there to be a, an ID. Okay, there is no application logic here, so like, again, this can be this simple. So, should fetch a list, a guess, 
and the ID can be guess.id. Okay, let's check the coverage. Coverage. Okay, looking done. I think we're all good. Again, it's opinionated to put these into variables or, or not. Like, uh, it's always the same object here, and we could extract this to the object here. But what I don't like with that is needing to scroll up and down uh, to, to understand my tests. So this, I think, makes it very clean and very clear what's the input and what's the assertion. So what can we do next? We can extract business static from our controllers into a service layer. But first, of course, we need to ask, add unit tests to our controllers. And then we can add Husky to run tests and pit here before you commit. Thank you all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and please send me a message if you want me to cover something specific. Thank you.